A couple months ago, I experienced something so exciting. Uh, it was with my little boy, Valor. Now, Valor is a little over two years old, and, and he's in the stage right now to where he repeats everything that he's hearing. So you kind of have to be careful what you allow him to watch on TV or even, you know, what you say around the house. Um, but about a couple of months ago, he looked at me when we we're laying in bed and I've been telling him this phrase that's common for parents to tell their children. I, I've been speaking this phrase over him his whole life. I've been singing it over him ever since he was born. And, and he decided to, to come into our bed late one night and he laid down next to me and I looked him in the face and I said, I love you, Valor. And he looked straight back at me and he said, I love you too, Daddy." It filled my heart with such joy because he was reflecting the love, the personality of who I am, the affectionate father that I am was being poured into him and he was able to finally mimic or respond that back to me, as well as his siblings and, and, and to his mom as well. I believe to become one with our call, we have to begin to understand that God has placed his heart and his personality in us and he's just waiting for us to come alive in it so that we can reflect it or mimic it or display it to the rest of the world. There's an amazing man of God, this preacher and a theologian, his name's John Piper. And he, he has this to say about worship. He says that God is most glorified when we, his children, are most satisfied in him. And isn't that an amazing thought? That God would be just, he would be glorified and satisfied as we are being satisfied in him. But I wanna take this a step further because I believe that God is most glorified when we're most satisfied in him because God is most satisfied when he is glorified through us. Do you realize that God wants to glorify himself in and through you? That he has a plan for your life? Something far beyond anything you could ever fathom or imagine. But some of us, we struggle with this, like what was I made for? And that's where the rubber really hits the road in our walk with God. Are you living and walking in God's call for your life? Are you becoming one with God's call lived out so that he can be most glorified in and through you. Let me give you some thoughts to think about here. Somebody told me a long time ago, uh, just this amazing uh, man of God, I was sitting in the seminar and then somebody had a question and they asked him, how do I know what my call is? And he looked at them and he said, you know, the best indicator what your call truly is, is to follow your tears. What, what stirs your soul? What makes you come alive? What, what are the things that you become broken about? Is it about refugees? Is, is, is it about the, the, the human trafficking? Is it about uh, the poor? Is it about evangelism? What are the things that stir your soul? Because God's desire is to see a world reconciled back to himself, but through you, using his glory in and through you. In John 17, 22 through 23, we've been going over this verse, and this is what Jesus has to say and pray about us, his future followers. He says, I have given them the glory that you gave me. Do you hear that? I've given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. You guys want to know something? The world cannot know Jesus apart from his people being activated in their call. They will not hear the gospel unless the passions that God has put in your life are surrendered into his hands for the sake of his glory. But here's the beautiful thing. We don't live these lives of trying to appease God. Like, like, you know, we get notches on our belt. We get glory notches, you know, like when I've done something good for God, I get a glory notch. The beautiful thing is God is already satisfied in you. 
He already thinks that you're wonderful. He already thinks that you're beautiful, but he wants you to come alive in the dreams that you have in your heart that maybe you think that you're, you're, you're unqualified for. Maybe you think like, how could I ever pull this off? I don't have the resources to do this. But see, that's where the beautiful thing comes in. Let God pour in his might, his power, his glory in and through your life and then see what he does. I promise you, if you align yourself with what he wants to do in and through you, it's gonna be the greatest adventure that you could ever dream or fathom. So let me pray for you. Jesus, I thank you for these amazing people. And we, we pray tonight as, as they're even discussing and, and talking around these things, Jesus, that you would begin to stir the passions in their heart. God, the things that they're gifted at, it might not necessarily be their vocations, God. Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but you have put passions in their hearts to do greater things than they ever thought, dreamed, or imagined. God, we're so grateful that you don't call the qualified, but you qualify the called, and you've called all of us into your great kingdom work and to seeing this world reconciled back into a right relationship with you. God, stir our hearts, give us new dreams, new visions, and bless us as we bless you in Jesus' mighty name, amen.